What's going on, guys? Welcome to the much-anticipated fourth part of the AE2 tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be talking about advanced networking, specifically P2P tunnels and quantum link chambers. A quantum link chamber is an AE2 multi-block that allows you to wirelessly transmit your network over infinite distances, including cross-dimensionally. In order to make the quantum link chamber, you're going to have to craft these quantum link chambers and ME quantum rings. You are going to need eight quantum rings, followed by a quantum link chamber in the center, and once you build it, it will form the multi-block. Right-clicking on the center of the quantum link chamber brings up an inventory here, and the inventory is so that you can put inside of it a quantum entangled singularity. In order to make a quantum entangled singularity, you'll need to craft a matter condenser. You'll have to switch the mode to singularity. You'll have to insert a 64K ME storage component, and then you'll have to start pumping it full of all of sorts of unwanted material. So in this case, I'm loading it full of cobblestone, and once it reaches 256,000, it's going to create another singularity. Once you have your singularity, grind up an ender pearl, throw it on the ground along with some tiny TNT from the AE2 mod, hit it with a lever, redstone torch, or some sort of signal, it will blow up and it will create two of these quantum entangled singularities. If you create more than one of the quantum entangled singularities, don't worry, they will not stack. It will always keep the ID separate so you know which ones belong to which singularity chamber. Once you have both quantum rings set up, and obviously they won't be this close together, you want to connect it to your network. So this is going to be our sending quantum entangled ring, and you can see that there's no power running to this by the dimness of these blue lights here. So once I click it, Bam, now I have power. You'll notice this also does not use any channels. Go to your second ring and make sure your second ring has power. This is a problem I've encountered a few times. Um, and generally, you need to give it power from an outside source. So slapping on an energy acceptor alongside some other source of power will power this up. You place your quantum entangled singularities and make sure they're both of the same um, item ID here, just like that. And now these two chambers are linked. So I can deposit anything I want into this network and it will automatically appear on this network. And really it's just that simple. Being able to transmit your network long range across dimension doesn't come with its downsides though. If you take a network tool and hit your ME network, you'll notice that the quantum rings alone have a drain of 704 RF per tick and the two quantum link chambers together have a drain of 88 RF per tick. So before you go ahead and make these, just make sure that you can handle the power requirements of them. All right, now when talking about peer-to-peer -peer tunnels, I'm gonna try to simplify this as best I can. I'm not gonna get super complicated with it and I hope that my explanation of it um, will be adequate and you'll be able to run with it um, as far as you possibly want. Now peer-to-peer -peer tunnels are basically a way of getting something from one place to another. If you open up NEI here and uh, click on a crafting recipe for all these peer-to-peer -peer tunnels, you'll notice that the only one that actually has a recipe is the P2P tunnel-me, and that is on purpose. Now, I am going to provide a link in the description of all of the items that you can use to smack these blocks with to turn them into the right ones, but to save time, I'm just going to refer you there. So, there's seven different kinds, and the default one is ME. We're going to spend the most time talking about this one, but we're not going to go over it right now. To turn it into an EU, just grab like some sort of um, thing from IC2, and you can see that it's changed. The tooltip on the top there says P2P Tunnel EU. A redstone one, slap it with something redstone. An item, slap it with something that transports items. Liquid or fluid, slap it with a bucket, something like that. Light, slap it with a torch or some sort of light providing object. And then this one is called P2P Tunnel FE. Um, somebody can help me with what that stands for, but this transfers RF from one place to another through your network. All right, so what actually do these P2P tunnels do? Well, simply in a nutshell, they take something, they move it from one place to another. Now, that sounds like a really dumb explanation, but that's basically um, all they do. And to overcomplicate it, complicate it wouldn't help anybody. So this takes water, passes it through your system, and dumps it somewhere else. Takes power, items, redstone signal, light, passes it through your system, dumps it something somewhere else. Now, it's important to note that the stuff that's going into these P2P tunnels 
never actually goes onto the storage in your system. So there might be water passing through your system, but no water ever gets in there. The same thing goes for items. If you have an item PTP tunnel, it's actually passing directly from one point to the other point without ever having um, to enter your storage at all. So how do you set these up? Let's start with the water here first. I have water being extracted and putting put into a P2P tunnel fluid right here. And on the other side, I have a tank and I want to get water from one side to the other. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my P2P tunnel ME, which is the default P2P tunnel, and then I'm going to hit it with a bucket of water and now it's fluid. But it says up in the top there that it's not linked and that's where the memory card comes into play and this is super important. You can't do this without the memory card. Make sure the memory card settings are cleared by shift right clicking at the floor or something like that. And then go to the P2P tunnel that's on the input side, and it's important to do this in the right order, and shift right click. You can see that I've copied the device configuration to the memory card. And this also says device unlinked, but it's online. Now I'm going to go over here to my output side and then right click it. And now they're linked and now you see that there's water passing through the system. Awesome, 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 awesome. It's also important to note that there can be one input but multiple outputs and we will see that momentarily. Now for this example, I have EU power going into my EU PTP tunnel and it's powering up this macerator here. So if I load this with stuff, you see that the power never actually goes down and that's because power is going from there to there. And the remainder of these are all already set up. If I go ahead and take items and I'm just gonna boom, get rid of that real quick and put them in this chest, I have an item duct pushing into my item PTP tunnel. I'm gonna dump my whole inventory in there and it's going to start slowly appearing over here. Now it never actually again goes into my storage, it's just moving things from one place to another. So if you wanna output like ore processing into a P2P tunnel and have it dumped out in a completely entirely separate spot in your base before it enters your system in the form of ingots, you can do that. Be creative, I don't care what you do with it. Um, they're very versatile. This one is for transporting um, RF. So this one's taking RF from this capacitor and it's putting it into this machine here. And you can see that this machine is maintaining power. Fantastic. Same goes with the redstone signal. You apply some sort of redstone signal and you don't have to use a torch it can, or a lever. It can be a torch. It can be some sort of um, Ender IO conduit. Um, if I go ahead and make it nighttime, I can flip this and you can see that my light goes on. Fantastic. I can also use the light PTP tunnel, which eh, limited functionality in my in my opinion. It doesn't actually you can't use it to like power solar panels or anything like that, which is a bummer. Um, but the exit P2P tunnel light is over here, and you can't tell that it's outputting light because there's so much over here already. Um, but if I go ahead and drop a thing of glowstone on there, you'll see that pff, light flies out of that thing over there. So P2P tunnels take something bring it through your system or pass it through your system without ever touching it and drop it out somewhere else. All right, now we're gonna start talking about the regular P2P tunnels. What these do is they transmit channels from one place to another. Now, on the surface, if you just take that statement for what it's worth and you don't know what they do, that sounds kind of stupid because that's what the dense cables do and that's what the, the smart cables do, um, but they're far more powerful than that. So what I have here is I have a P2P tunnel ME. This is a plane. I have it putting, I have it on a controller, okay? And you already know, because you watch the other videos, that each facing of a controller can now put a total of 32 channels. So what this P2P tunnel is essentially doing is it's taking or accessing the 32 channels of this thing and condensing it down to one channel, which is just basically the cost of the P2P tunnel itself. So I have this one attached here to this controller. It's going up into my quantum ring, and the quantum ring is actually transporting it over here. And this is the other link to my quantum ring. So you see all this junk in my system? That's the same junk that's in this system over here. Okay, and I can put even more in there. There's all sorts of junk now. And these things are linked. Now, the P2P tunnel output is right here. So here's an ME1, and here's a redstone one. Um, one of the really neat things that you can do um, with P2P tunnels and quantum rings is that you can send a redstone signal wirelessly anywhere. So if I go ahead and flip this signal, it not only turns on that light, but the signal also tra travels wirelessly through my quantum ring and into here. So um, the possibilities with that are uh, virtually endless there. Um, but this P2P tunnel is essentially going wirelessly 
It's taking 32 channels that are available from my single controller right here, pushing them through the wireless network, and dropping them out right here. And you see that I have a dense cable attached directly onto that. And this P2P tunnel, the exit is essentially, um, just think of it as a face or at one side of a controller. And now I can access all 32 channels and I can do with those channels what I want. So that's just a little taste of the power of the P2P tunnel. All right, so these things really shine when you've you set up your base, you've been playing for a while, um, and your controller is possibly, if you haven't built properly, uh, possibly clogged up, inaccessible, unexpandable, and you've run into a problem where you have dense cables going everywhere, all over the place, and you've just basically run out of room to extend the range of your network. So what we can do is we can power all of this stuff through here, and we can send all of these channels, which is, this is 32 channels worth of equipment, through a single smart cable. Now you will know that you can only transmit eight channels through a smart cable. So again, the power of P2P tunnels comes into play here. So I have one attached to the system here, and I'm gonna attach another one here. And we just learned that this basically will act as a facing of the controller if you're using it in this manner. So I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna attach them, nothing happens. That's because we need to link them. So take your memory card, make sure it's cleared, shift, right click, copy that setting, paste it onto there by right clicking, and all of a sudden, all this stuff comes to life. And now all 32 channels, you can see in the top up there, um, the tooltip says 32 of 32 channels, are passing through this one little line, and they're being broadcasted all over the place here. So this will take 32 channels and condense it down into one channel. Now the other important thing to note is that your P2P tunnel uses a channel. So you have to actually connect it to your controller. So if I eliminate that, all of a sudden I lose everything. And that's because you can't just slap a P2P tunnel on top of the controller and expect it to suck all the channels out. The P2P tunnel needs a control, <laughs> needs a channel itself. Okay? So that's why you always need to make sure your tunnel is networked into your system. All right, so this dense cable may look like your normal maxed out channel dense cable, but hypothetically, if every single one of these channels was actually a P2P tunnel that was hooked up to a controller, each one of these channels actually could carry 32 channels. Now, getting a little bit uh, inception on you here, um, but one dense cable could actually possibly carry up to 1,024 channels. And just so that you can visualize that, I've made a little visual aid uh, because uh, I like seeing things in action here. Now, this is not hooked up properly to the controller, um, but this is kind of what it would look like if you had a whole bunch of output P2P tunnels sending 32 channels each. Um, and you can see that this gets very powerful very quickly, and this is a great way to clean up your network and all those dense cables that are just jumbled all over the place in a tangled mess. All right, so there are a ton of things that you can do with these cables, and I couldn't possibly jam them all into one tutorial video. So what I'm expecting is to just give you a few pushes in the right direction and for you guys to roll with the information that you have. So here's an example of a network, and actually it's a really a subnetwork, but you're, it's basically just using controllers to just get more channels. And you can see that these are all running, um, and uh, they're all just P2P'd in. So <laughs> all of these channels on all of these different controllers are actually accessible through this right here. And I can take all of these P2P tunnels so we got eight, six, so this is 32 P2P tunnels. I can pipe them directly through this one channel and send them to wherever I want. Now you see that these controllers are actually are powered up and they have no power source, or it seems like they have no power source, but they do. I'm using the RF P2P tunnel here um, to power these up. So you could string together basically as many controllers you, as you want to essentially get an infinite amount of channels. All right, so because we really didn't cover it in any of the other videos, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about subnetworking. Uh, basically, what a subnetwork is, is a smaller network apart from your larger, bigger main network. Um, technically, I guess you could have all subnetworks and none of them could be your main one. Um, but 
Uh, that's what subnetworks are. They're little networks that are separate from your main one, but that also are connected to them. Now, there's a ton of ways to do this, so I'm just going to show you a couple. The first one is using an ME interface on the back of a storage bus. So since you watch the other videos again, you know that a storage bus will recognize the inventory contents of whatever it's attached to. And in this case, if you put an interface here, it will recognize the contents of everything in this here. And this will also recognize the contents of this network here. So we have a yellow network and we have a blue network. Inside the yellow network, we have a whole bunch of concrete. Inside the blue network, we have an iron and gold ore. And let's say we have our base going and um, it was too big, so we had to build multiple AE networks, and now we want to connect them together without having to remove any of the controllers and stuff, because eh, that might be a big of a pain. Take your storage bus, slap it on the back of your interface, and then connect them, and now these networks will be able to talk to each other using this simple method. So you see now all the things that were available in the yellow network are now on the blue network. Fantastic. All right, now we are going to add two more networks on top of the two networks that we already have, and we are going to use that via the ender chest method. So I have an ender chest and the idea is I'm going to export stuff into a chest. It's going to go somewhere else and it's going to come back all set and how I want it to come back. So what we're going to do is we are going to process the ores inside of here. So we are going to export the gold and the iron into this ender chest and we are going to send them to that ender chest. Over here, we have an ender chest and the items and you can see it slowly happening here. The ores are coming out of the ender chest through this uh, item duct here and into this P2P tunnel. The P2P tunnel is linked to both of these machines here as output settings because we know that we can use multiple outputs but only one input and these are filling the pulverizers. The pulverizers are then being drained by more P2P tunnels over here. Each of these is linked to, so this one's linked to this one, this one's linked to this one here and they're being thrown inside the redstone furnace. Now they are being dragged out using P2P tunnels again and dropped back into this ender chest. And over here, the ender chest is has an import bus on it, which is set to only accept iron and gold. So basically what we've done is we made a sub network to just handle ore processing. So now, despite the fact that we had all these ores in here, they get immediately sent out to another sub network. They get refined up into their ingot forms and thrown back into the main system. Now you might be asking, uh, Captain Jack, you could have just used import and export buses on your stupid network over here. Why did you have to go ahead and use P2P tunnels? Well, P2P tunnels are for the pros. And um, the reason why I'm using P2P tunnels is that I actually do not need any sort of ME inventory storage space um, because technically none of the stuff is ever in the system. So if I had import and export buses, I would either need an ME chest um, with a storage cell inside of it or a drive, um, which I didn't want. And honestly, P2P tunnels are so awesome that you can do this. I mean, this is its own network, just a few things right here. Um, so we have four networks all working together one using the ender chest to that send to those two networks and one using um, the storage bus interface little trick and uh, if you do put these together you will get an achievement called recursive um, networking all right so this is the thumbnail that i use obviously and uh, this is fantastic it makes me very happy it's very colorful it's very organized um, what this is is um, a way to organize your p2p tunnels so you actually know um, which one is transmitting which channel because once you have um, a multi-block controller with a bunch of P2P tunnels on them, it's really easy to um, lose you know, which one is carrying which channels. So I, I'm going to highly recommend that you color code them. So what's happening here? This is a single controller, which is actually spreading out all of these channels, and I believe it's 160 channels, over this big network here. So you can see how powerful just one single ME controller can actually be and how organized you can get with such, with such a small compact setup here. So very importantly, one of the sides of the one side of the controller needs to um, be the side that provides a channel for the P2P tunnels. I can't emphasize that enough. Somebody's going to comment on this video and say my P2P tunnel is not working. Why is it not working? It's probably not working because the device is not online because you didn't give it a channel. 
Um, so make sure you have power coming into your controller and into your system. So that's what this is here. And then I've attached a P2P tunnel to the remaining five sides of my controller. And each of the colors here corresponds to the P2P tunnel that it's using the channels from. So the orange is transporting, transporting 32 channels. It's going through here, over here, and out the orange. And if you can color code them again, this makes it super easy because it's very, <laughs> it's very easy to lose track of. Um, this cable here and the amount of channels that it's being used, um, these channels are all P2P tunnels. So we know that for every channel, every line is one channel on a smart cable. Um, so we're using five channels and one's going to here, two are going to there, and two are going to there. So if you do make a network, make sure that you color code stuff so the note, you know where it's going so you don't accidentally cross your lines and then stuff stops working and it becomes a mess. Keep it nice and clean. Do what Captain does. Make it colorful. All right, now I'm going to catch a little bit of flack for saying this, but there is absolutely no reason or no reasonable reason why you would ever need an ME controller brain like this in your base. You would literally have to have so many freaking machines to even make this feasible that it would be ridiculous. And if you need this kind of setup in your base, you need to send me a screenshot so there's proof. Otherwise, I don't believe you. So what this is, is it's a very large controller. And uh, I alluded to this before. Um, about how the bigger your controller is, um, the more channels you can get. And uh, these are all the P2P tunnels set up. And you will need colored cables for this, or you can use cable anchors. It's up to you. Um, what I have here is I have dense cables attached to the controller. Again, super important. Don't just like freaking cover your whole system in P2P tunnels and expect it to work without connecting it into your actual system. So on here, we have the red network, and there's four here, four here. We have the cyan network. There's four there, four there. Does it go underneath? No. Um, we have the green network, okay? And these are all available channels. And because they're connected to a dense cable, a hub that's sending them into my system, everything that's connected to the controller is available outside, which is why I have all these other dense cables, which can transport any number of these P2P tunnels out and into my base somewhere or anywhere. So again, I think this is a ludicrous build and uh, probably would never ever need to happen in your base. I sure haven't needed it. I mean, just look at what you can do with one single block. I mean, come on. You don't need much more than, <laughs> you don't need much more than just one block. Um, but these are cool to look at and it's very advanced and techy looking. Um, but hopefully I've explained this well enough um, to make this really simple for you. It's basically just you're slapping a tunnel on here. Use your um, network card to link it to another place. Make sure you don't lose track of it. Again, with builds like this, it's, it would be very hard to lose track of, you know, which red one actually goes to, you know, which P2P network. Um, and you can transfer literally thousands and thousands and thousands of channels all over the place with a brain like this. And if you thought that was out of hand, it can get way more out of hand than that. And you could put so many channels in this max size controller, and you could obviously fit more controller pieces on there, um, that it would be enormous. And there are some screenshots out there. If you, um, I'm not sure what you can Google, but I have before. It shows you massive AE2 networks and, and just how expansive and powerful these can be. And it's only possible through the use of these P2P tunnels. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. The final concluding episode to the AE2 tutorial series. Um, I'm surprised the mod hasn't changed so drastically at this point that we have to redo the entire thing, which won't happen. But uh, we appreciate everybody that's waited for this. Um, we hope the four-part tutorial series was informative and helpful, and uh, we try to be as in-depth and as cover cover as much as possible, as accurately as possible. If you did like the video, we'd appreciate a thumbs up and uh, drop a comment in the comment section below. If you want to say hi, make sure you drop by our Discord channel. Link is in the description. Mod pack I'm using, um, link in the description, bunch of other stuff in the description. If uh, you have a question, just ask us. Guys, that's it. Captain Jack out. Stay poised.